and our target is to create uh, one integrated service in the near future uh, which will provide more joint of support. But in, in, in preparation for that, through a sort of coordinated approach, we want to maximise uh, for the public uh, the opportunities that we have across our service areas and make sure that there's a, a, no duplication uh, but actually making good use of the resource that's available to us across the partnership. This type of operation has proved extremely productive. Uh, we have reduced the levels of antisocial behaviour and crime rates still continue to fall. But it's also reassuring, as I said earlier, to members of the public that uh, these are visible controls, uh, visible controls who, who do attend uh, areas of, 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 of antisocial behaviour and hotspots in the community. In, in addition to that, whilst I say it's a non statutory service and uh, uh, primarily based as being a council service, we do uh, also uh, operate within an, an income generating environment. Do provide support to, a, to 138 uh, service level agreements that we have. Over 50% of these are with local schools. Uh, we also have 60 public buildings and also 15 private buildings that support and provide a patrol service. In terms of how we, how we do this, uh, this is a paid for service. Um, so some of the premises are private, and the typical service level agreement does ensure that we do have some physical uh, presence in some of the buildings. But more importantly, actively visit each location uh, five times per week. We cover a large amount of the borough. Uh, it's a modern, literary and highly visible service uh, which the general public uh, have been uh, supportive of. And clearly from a business perspective, it provides that presence uh, and visible presence that we have been referring to throughout. It's also uh, important to note that as a result of undertaking the security visits to the customer locations, patrol service is clearly out and about and can provide uh, drive-by situations to hot hotspot hot areas which may be occurring across the borough at any one moment in time. These drive-bys are only requested by either the police or the community safety partnership members uh, in order to increase the number of official vehicles seen at a particular location. We did have, as I referred to earlier, an email from an anonymous employee who had made uh, counsellors uh, at work of our patrol service and that we were providing uh, free security services to Sherlock House in Manor Road in Morrison. And hopefully that this report will further uh, identify that it wasn't a free security service which was actually part of our normal practice in terms of our drive bars. And that's no different to many of the requests, as I said, that we get for community patrols, assurance and assistance. In terms of Sherlock House, uh, this is an office accommodation block situated in the residential estate. Um, and in terms of there have, we have reports that there have been a window smashed and also seen as a potential site for future antisocial behaviour. This particular building accommodates seven separately listed, build, uh, seven, seven separately listed businesses and is also attached to an residential dwelling. And clearly, the partnership were concerned that as to its safety uh, around that particular area of the time. And in consultation with the, the head of uh, corporate community safety, Mark, a decision was taken to support that request for, for drive-bys. Generally, the request for any drive-by is, is agreed uh, because we do see it uh, as a really good strengthening opportunity to ensure that visible presence is made. Um, so it have to be quite compelling reasons to why we wouldn't uh, provide that drive-by support. And we do encourage drive-by locations to stay active for, for a maximum period of six weeks from the initial request. Um, but it, as, as the report says, it's un unusual for that to remain in place for six weeks. Uh, and, and teams are often stood down uh, well before uh, that, that six weeks is up. In regards to Sherlock House, this was set up for an initial two week period, uh, and in terms of the remaining four weeks uh, that, that had been undertaken, the drive by for Sherlock House only took place when the patrol had actually been called to attend that particular vicinity. Drive by uh, for Sherlock House was never a request for the community patrol to stop the property or for any officers to get out of their vehicles. Uh, and no community patrol officer recorded getting out of their vehicles at that particular location. During the 21 day period between the 13th of July and 9th of August, uh, 29 drive bys took place at Sherlock House. Each drive by didn't exceed three minutes. And on, 70, uh, on 21 selected different days, we actually undertook 229 drive bys to anti social behaviour hotspots, both in terms of private and public sector. What can be confirmed is that Sherlock House did not receive any preferential treatment. It simply formed part of what we see as normal partnership arrangements. And Chair, I can conclude that in terms of our report and hopefully members can make sure we do. Thank you, Jay. Uh, going to take questions, Chris.
say, Chair, is a little disappointed that having the, the uh, requisition was submitted on 15th of September and it's taken 10 weeks to get in. That, that is an enormous, enormous amount of time. And I know the situation wasn't time limited to get the meeting, but what of course is Chair, we could have sort of taken it up earlier. But, but that, that said, we know that the scrutiny working group, the standards working group, has now put that right so that this operates under the same premises as a few spokespersons for all so we hear from them straightforward. Okay. So I have some questions on the report. And a question for a question on, on what Joe just said about 138 service level agreements. Again, we're not questioning community control doing the work they pay for donating income. If those 138 service level agreements bring in income, good. And that, that's less it more. Let's get more service level agreements so we can bring in more income. Having said that, you know, the report says Sherlock House is situated in a residential estate. It paints it as if it's a building with its oil houses on the edge of Briscoe Town Centre, adjoining the residential estate. It's not situated within the residential estate. So, so you know, I'd say, I, I believe that's a bit disingenuous. The window was reported broken at the office block on the 12th of July. Uh, and marking in the report, it says a, a, a multi agency coordination meeting was called. Was, it, was that called simply because the window was broken? When was it called? Who called it? Did the council call it? Did the police call it? Which agency asked for this multi agency meeting? What date was that meeting? Who attended? What's it minutes? Can we have a sight of the minutes of that meeting? And then you go on to say in the report that you know, Willow Community Control was in drive by the 13th of July, started on the 13th of July. Now, I, I, I've spoken about communication with Community Control officers. They don't recognise the same drive by. They don't, they don't realise it, they don't recognise it, it doesn't exist in their vocabulary. And they're saying to me, do you mean, do you mean it as a special attention site? You call it a drive by, they call it a special attention site. Is, is this drive by? Is this in a, in a, a document somewhere? Is this a procedure? Is it called drive by? Because certainly the offices don't recognise it as a drive by. And you also say these locations stay active for six weeks. Again, people I speak to are not, not aware of a six week rule. Is, is that recorded anywhere? Does that mean a procedural document? We must have a, a, a document that sets out procedures to be followed. Is that six weeks recorded in that? Or is it just eight and think six weeks will do it? In paragraph 47, it's stated that World Community Control was tasked to visit if called to an incident in close proximity of Sherlock House. And there was, as you call it, a call every day. And therefore, I would use the term drive by because that's what you know, occurred daily throughout the six week period. Can you provide the logs that show World Community Control attended and drove by? Sherlock House 42 times. You, you say it's drive by, didn't I see three minutes? Well, I'm sure most of us here know Sherlock House. I find it incredible to say it takes three minutes to drive by. Can you explain why it takes three minutes if nobody's getting out? You know, it, it can't possibly take three minutes, even at one mile an hour. It can't take three minutes. So, you know. In the same par paragraph, you do a comparison. So can you tell me that any other unpaid hotspots get 42 visits in a six week period? Councillor, you just say you've established this is not an unpaid service. It's part of the partnership. So uh, by no, no means, I'm asking no, questions no, that what, I won't stop. No, what I'm saying, Chair, is we accept that there is a paid service for certain issues, but certainly Sherlock House wasn't paid. Yeah. But is, is and did any, anywhere else that is unpaid, did they get the same treatment? Did they get 42 the minutes? The unpaid that suggests it was somehow free. Now, if I understand the report correctly, the Marshal's main need correctly, this arises out of a partnership agreement with people like the police. That's right, that's right. The police right. are always requesting. I mean, uh, Mr. Evening Mark has taken notes of all the questions, so we can ask them. Well, it certainly yeah. is, it's very good. Uh, so, so, you did do a comparison, your comparison, so did any other hotspots. We use the word unpaid if you take offence at that. Get 42 plus visits in a six week period. And let, you know, you don't mention in here, you, you know, you concentrate 
on Sherlock House. But let's move away and look at the other five locations that seem to have had the benefits of feasibility checks. And, and these aren't made up locations, these were sent to me in an email by one of your offices. Laird Side Trust in Royal Standard House, a private property on Union Street. A private property on Union Street. No other explanation. Why a private property on Union Street? Thanks, the officer. He couldn't tell me. Cherry Tree Shopping Centre. Ivy Farm Butterfly Scout Trust. Milner Street Houses, Magenta Living Properties. Have we forgotten that Magenta Living took a contract away from Royal Community Control and cost? Well, what I'm saying is, this was the email that sent to me, Miller Street Towers, Magenta Living Properties. You know, we lost the contract with Magenta Living, but we're still getting the benefits of the service, and they're not paying for it. I find that incredible. You know, Middle Food Bank, we put someone in that. That's probably it. So, these are just a few. These are just a few of the, the locations. How many other are there? How deep does this go? How many locations do Willow Community Patrol visit on, on the instructions of officers, or the, on the instructions of the community, the, the community safety partnership, or the multi-agency? You know, we have to remember that while Community Patrol is carrying out all these ancillary activities to all these other locations, it's not carrying out its primary responsibility of protecting council property and council land. There are my questions for now. I might get more as, as I get some answers, but they're, they're all setting up for now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Chair, three, three years. Uh, I think I've captured most of those council related with that. Um, if you stop, just show me some of the So, um, the first. Uh,
proximity of the, the, the domestic dwelling in terms of that, that, that location. Um, the, the, the reference to that in that, in that location is that uh, it is, if there is domestic properties around there and, and the Liscard area was on an ASP hotspot itself at the time, so it was trying to make the, the, the community aware of the point that we, we give locational uh, um, uh, attention, uh, attention to areas on a locality basis which could be anything from a single property, given that if there's a risk that raise there, all the way up to something like the Cherry Tree Centre or something of that nature. It really depends on the information that's being uh, provided and about maintaining that high visibility presence, which is hopefully going to deter predominantly young people gathering and causing mischief around these areas. And in essence, that's what that, that's what we've alluded to in, in, in that reference to the, to the domestic dwelling. Um, you say about uh, um, other companies and the number of visits. Uh, in terms of the information that I provided here on the number of visits, that once the um, site, of, a site or a locality has been identified as an area for drive-bys, the information that I gathered uh, or I interrogated around the number of visits is a GPS system. So all the community patrol vehicles are fitted with a GPS system, and I, I asked for that to be interrogated times at the Sherlock House proximity. So I'd have to go back and check where they measured that from in terms of that proximity and a GPS system and about the length of time. But the three minutes was, was meant to give you an indication that what we're not doing is having food patrol turn up and walk around and patrol those areas. It was really intended to give you an idea that they're in that proximity for that length of time. If you want me to nail it right down onto, onto that property itself, I'll go back and obviously look at that and see if the GPS system can give that information. But that's where it, the, 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 those figures came from. Um, the, 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 the final bit there, unless I, I missed one, that was about what we do for the private properties. And you raised a list of private properties there. And I think I'll, 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 I'll answer that with the, in, in the general context of the report, really, that in terms of the community patrol service, um, Yes, we see a key element of its service is, is about the protection and security of the council buildings, but we also see, as an important part of it, its high visibility reassurance patrolling around the borough in general, so that people can see uh, an increased high visibility uniformed service there, which one, we, 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 we consider it to uh, reduce the amount of crime in, in, in areas where those are taking place. And if some of those are situations where they will, they will be a private premise, then, then they are a private premise because we will be passing those as part of those patrol routes. And that's really the essence that those are, that, that those are, 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 are offered in. Again, if that list is provided to me or has been provided to me, I, I can go back and check on each one of those. And again, look at it against the GPS system and give the committee uh, uh, the number of times something to visit that if that's considered to be uh, something Yeah. 
essence, everything that's alluded to in the report that, that we say has an SLA against it is a service level agreement. It, it's, it's a contract in effect. So that's a paid for service. The paid for service is, is, is offered to um, uh, those, those people who wish to, to purchase it. And there are a couple of different levels of service provision. So uh, 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 there is a standard, which, a standard package and, and the cost of that SLA would include a number of physical get out of the building and security checks around the building and, and, and in essence if you move from the, the basic service level agreement to the um, to the superior level service agreement it increases the number of walk around the drones that they obviously going to pay for. And, and the difference with that to a what I term as a drive-by is that a drive-by is about that. The officers are not getting out of their vehicle, they're driving past offering uh, or providing a high visibility presence in that area by a highly delivery vehicle with lights on, etc, etc. And they are able to, as they're driving by, report any incidents or, or, or any intelligence back in through the, the community patrol base into the parks. Yeah. Um, so that, in, in your opinion, because we're talking about people who get in this service as a free service, they're, they're not getting out of the vehicles and walking around and doing those checks. Which is what they would be paying for as a service level agreement. So, is that yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so a, a service level agreement. It's exactly that. So, the Cherry Tree Centre, which is offered as one of the examples, the Cherry Tree Centre is a private business responsible for its own alarm system and own security. However, if there's ASB going on around the proximity of the Cherry Tree Centre, we would, I would say it's the norm for the community control service. If that's raised as a hotspot to, to put drive-bys in that area, but they're in the area around soft public disorder, reassurance to the public, and around a, a, a presence in that area, rather than the security of the Cherry Tree Centre as a location and the businesses in there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All these feet, this home is a hotspot. Okay, so we, in terms of the makeup of the of the partnership, we have uh, an anti-social subgroup so in essence they get intelligence on a monthly basis the intelligence is all of the reports into the police or the council's uh, uh, anti-social behaviour team they're, 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 and, and information on, on general crime and behaviour um, around ASB and, and misbehaviour and depending on the levels of those reports in those localities would be increased into a hotspot. It also takes into account I have to say ward councillors comments into the police and to the community control service about certain locations in your wards and we add them into the context in the mix about determining those options. Steve on. Well, I mean, I just want to go back in this and you know, ask, ask about the, the essence of the community control that it set up. And it was a long time ago, I remember uh, speaking on behalf of the council at the LGA, <coughs> we set it up and, and its initial description was what it said on the tin, a community Control. But one of its primary functions was to look after council buildings, but it was a community patrol. So as they were going about their work, they were, I think we described in the Home Office report, which ordered the creation of the community patrol, as a, more eyes and ears for the police was, was the phrase that was used at the time. Uh, now the question coming is, as the police numbers have cut, uh, and we've cut community patrol service ourselves due to budgetary cuts, not inflicted um, on ourselves, relationship is probably becoming stronger rather than the weekend and we are actually now helping supplement black and police officers uh, in, 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 on a more regular occasion and I think the officers could describe it better this bonding and strengthening the relationship between the police and ourselves and the joint approach with any other service that it can help towards reduce antisocial behaviour. So the question is, um, is, is uh, enshrined within that. Uh, I've got comments to make afterwards because I have a deep suspicion that the motivation for this uh, investigation is absolutely nothing to do with the community control or uh, a, a, a political directive. But that's not the question of the and I might make one of my comments on that later on. But certainly that relationship from its inception was always envisaged that we would be assisting to the emergency services, in particular the police, as eyes and ears. And that role is still continued throughout the life of community control and probably has intensified. Is that a true statement? <coughs> Just make the bar, 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 but I think in terms of what Council Park is saying, yeah, absolutely. This is, this is a public sector partnership that we have here and, and we operate within that, within that, uh, that system. Um, we talked in the report about the, the further integration of that work and that's quite clearly as a consequence of the reductions that um, within um, both uh, the police and, and our own 
terms of that, uh, we, we get called down to those market sites to, to hotspots, which are driven by uh, intelligence that we receive, and as, as you said, from, from sometimes around the state, or sometimes from the community, most often by the police. I would hate to think that we got to a position where, where our risk-based approach was based on price, contract, or economics. This is about responding to incidents that occur. Now, I don't recognise the services are free. The services are paid for by the public and are doing a public service, whether they are run by the council, run by the police, or a combination of both. Uh, and I, I would fully agree with, 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 with the notion that in terms of that, that's what we are. We have a public partnership, and, and that's what how it works. A supplementary then, on a, on a simple name. Uh, perhaps I should have given you more of a discussion. Yes. High profile drive-bys, yes. If an MP's constituency office happens to be in a location where there's reported or te contextualised ASB and it becomes a hotspot, it would be considered as part of those drive-bys, but it wouldn't be on the context of it being an MP's location or an MP's constituency office. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I've just interested in when Same time as that, obviously, when you, when you make these uh, 
alluded to what, what, what Joe said really, that um, I, I haven't measured that and I wouldn't be able to measure that. The police can come and answer and tell you about what the uh, reductions in their service and their new local policing plan. As I understand it, those have been fairly minimal reductions in terms of presence in the area. Um, but in terms of the, 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 the um, uh, exercise of um, do, do the police go or do community patrol go, um, that measurement hasn't been done and it wouldn't happen in that way because community patrol would not be asked to respond to uh, 999 calls that the police are going to because there's, there's different areas of different criminalities and the levels of competency for the community patrol service. It would be inappropriate to even think about tasking that. But as we move forward in the partnership delivery plan, the integration, the intention is that we, we, we match up community patrol services who are out on patrol with PCSOs who have individuals <coughs> so they can join up and provide a joint up service. But that's at the early days of thinking in terms of those who are out. But I still wouldn't see community patrol being asked to respond to um, high, high risk or, or, or high violent type crime. It would be locality. It, it's still, the, the, the response and the work they're doing now, really. Okay. I'm going to take supplementary from Adam and then I'm going to go to Christine and then Seth. Just to follow up on those points, so I think you, you partly answered the first point. So Sherlock House wasn't obviously approached to let them know. But how do you businesses, if they've clearly got an antisocial hotspot, why 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 is some businesses deem that they need to get their own security and, and others just get it provided themselves? I, I don't understand how what, how that works. That like cherry tree have their own security, but sometimes they, we we supplement it. Businesses have to pay. I, don't, I just don't understand how that the, the line is drawn with that, but I'll, I'll leave it at your answer. I, on, on, on the second point, just, just before you get I'm mindful of straying into a different area of communities and you call this meeting. I think we do want to have the answer to that question. I, I just remind you that we're talking about free, 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 no, we're not talking about a few pages, we're talking about a few gets up free. What's the other was? And that's the price. I don't think that is. I think there's a difference there. I think there's a difference there. We're not here to scrutinise how they can't provide a service agreement. We're here to find out and look into whether or not free services are being provided to people. Now, by all means, I won't tell you on the set, but I'll just remind everyone to focus on the issue. And we would all, all respect chair, I think it's the opposite, isn't it? You, know, you pay, but it's free. And if you're not if you're not paying, it's, it's free. If you are paying, it's not free. I've already said it's, it's not free. It, it's part of a, a community service which is given by a, a group of public sector uh, bodies in partnership. So it's not free, no suggestion it's free, it comes out of tax. No, I don't mean it's free as in no one's paying the council, the taxpayers are going to be paying, it's whether the businesses or not. Yes. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to move on. Um, just on the second point, is it okay to just check that? Because I've never seen one college, if you can just check that. And then I think with the final point on filling gaps, I think what I was getting at is how often are the police the people who tell the community patrol to do something, and how often that split, <coughs> not how many incidents so the world and police go to and how many the community patrol. It's who originates the community patrol's direction, if you like. I think that's what I was going to get at. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Chair, if I may just come back on, on, on uh, the, 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 the final point, really. Um, there, there is a, the, in terms of the, how we identify a hotspot, it's done from the number of reports that we get, and there's, there's two there's two uh, ways that the public can report that in terms of, in terms of contacting services. One is through the police, either 101 or 999, and the other is through the council's anti-social behaviour team for those requests. So that information and those hotspots are identified predominantly from that information, those number of reports. However, they are supplemented by um, requests that we get in from ward councillors who will say that there is particular anti-social behaviour taking place in these areas, which is intelligence that might not come through because individuals either don't want to report it or not, but we include in that to, to, to identify where those areas are. And, and just to, to clarify the issue of, uh, around the, the Cherry Centre, it isn't about um, a security check for the Cherry Centre, it's about tackling community-based anti-social behaviour, and, and, and the issue around that is that these